Are you looking for your dream job? Do you find it challenging to negotiate at job interviews? Do you want to increase your online visibility to potential recruiters? Hello, everyone, and welcome to another brand new episode on my channel, Wonder Boho Book Club. Today, I'll be discussing the book, "What Color Is Your Parachute," written by Richard Nelson Bolles. Richard Nelson Bolles was an Episcopal clergyman and a best-selling author. In "What Color Is Your Parachute," Richard provides essential tips. For writing impressive resumes and cover letters, networking effectively, interviewing with confidence, and negotiating the best salary possible. Whether you're searching for your first job, were recently laid off, or are dreaming of a career change, what color is your parachute will guide you towards a fulfilling and prosperous life's work. Before moving ahead. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Part one: Finding the right job. The job search process can be a challenging one. There are many challenges that job seekers face when they are looking for a job. One of the challenges is that it is difficult to know what the company is looking for in a candidate. And what skill set they want. This can make it hard to know how to tailor your resume and cover letter towards the company's needs. Another challenge that many people face when searching for jobs is finding out where to start their search, and this can be especially difficult for people who have not had recent work experience or who have been unemployed recently. A third challenge that many people face when searching for jobs is knowing how much time they should spend on their search, because there are so many options and opportunities out there, especially in the 21st century, where the proliferation of the internet has turned the job market on its head. It can be hard to know which opportunity to pursue. And this often leads to people getting confounded and wasting their time on futile efforts. Part two: Finding a full-time job isn't easy anymore. The economic recession of 2008 led to a lot of changes in the labor market. Now there are more people looking for jobs, but fewer jobs available. As a result. It can take much longer to find a job, especially a long-term, full-time job. The recession has led to a rise in part-time work, freelancing, and self-employment. The recession caused employers to be cautious about hiring new employees, and instead, they are looking for more cost-effective ways of doing things. With the emergence of the internet. People can now find freelance jobs online, where they can work remotely with their own hours. This is beneficial for the employers as well, as such jobs typically have lower salaries, no benefits, or paid holidays. The number of freelancers in the United States alone has doubled since 2006, and is expected to continue increasing in the future. Part three: Social media and the job market. Social media is an important part of our lives, and it is also an important part of the job search process nowadays. A good way to manage your online appearance while looking for a job is to use the same professional profile on all your social media platforms. This will help you maintain a consistent image across all social networks. It is also advisable to keep your social media profiles tidy by removing any photos or posts that are not relevant to your career goals, or that you would not want a potential employer to see. Part four: Managing your online appearance. 
Online presence is a very important factor for both companies and job seekers. The way you present yourself on the internet can influence your future career opportunities. Google is the most popular search engine in the world. It is used by billions of people every day and it has a huge impact on what people see on the internet. Google uses algorithms to rank search results, which means that you can manipulate your online presence by improving SEO, Search Engine Optimization. Optimizing your online presence is not just about having a website or social media profile. It is about making sure that you are using the right keywords and hashtags to make your profile visible to the recruiters. The trick is to be proactive, hardworking, honest, friendly, and an expert in your field. For example, if you're an architect and have your own blog, you need to optimize your blog for Google's algorithm to make it more visible to recruiters, potential customers, and other relevant stakeholders. You should make sure that your blog is up to date with the latest trends in the industry and also use keywords in your job posts and hashtags on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Also, it's important to remember that a good resume is an important tool for a job seeker. It should be concise, clear, and show the skills, experience, and achievements of the candidate. It should be easy to read so that it can get the attention of the recruiter in a glance. The resume should not just be about listing down your qualifications and skills, but also about how you can use them to benefit the company you are applying for. The resume should include all your accomplishments, awards and accolades, which will make you stand out from other candidates who have similar skill sets as yours. It is important to keep your resume updated with current information so that it does not look outdated or irrelevant when someone looks at it. Part 5 Finding the right match between skills and opportunities If you are looking for a job, you should not just apply to any company that is hiring. You should make sure that the company is a good fit for you and your skills. This way, there will be a higher chance of getting hired. One way to make yourself attractive to the employer is by demonstrating that your skills and experience are a perfect fit for the company. You can do this by showing them how valuable you are to their business. You can also demonstrate how well suited you are for the position by highlighting your qualifications and skills in the resume or cover letter. Showing them what makes you unique as an applicant will help too. But of course, it's crucial to make sure you're a good fit for the company you're interviewing with as well. What about their environment? Do they provide a place for you to work that is motivating and productive? Or does it feel like a major headache? Would you be able to become a master in your field while working with them? The media is often guilty of over-exaggerating the state of the job market and making it seem like there's absolutely nothing available. However, that's not the truth. All you need to do is refine your search and put a bit more effort in making yourself noticeable. To listen to more interesting summaries, please subscribe to my channel. Part 6. Acing the interview process The interview is the final stage of the recruitment process before you make a decision. It's your chance to ask questions, get some advice and find out more about the company. This means that it's important to be mindful of your time. You should try to avoid wasting time with interviews which don't seem like they will be a good fit for you. When it comes to interviews, there are a few things you want to remember. 
Prepare questions in advance. You should have a list of questions that will help you decide if the job is right for you. Be confident and show your enthusiasm for the position. Employees want to hire people who are excited about their company, so it's important that they see that in you during the interview. Dress appropriately. Even if it's not a formal interview, wear something nice. It's a good idea to be confident in your interview, but don't come across as arrogant or patronizing. You want to show the interviewer that you're confident and competent, not that you know everything and they know nothing. Part 7. Salary Negotiation The first step to successfully negotiating your salary is to do research. Know what the company expects from you and what their budget is. Usually, you can find this type of information online on websites like Glassdoor or simply Google. There are also specialized platforms that track salary data by industry, job title, region, and age. With enough information, you can identify the range that employees will be willing to pay. The second step is to think about your worth and how much you want to earn. You can decide what concession you're willing to make and what your top expectations are. The third step is to prepare for negotiation. Make sure that you are confident and have done your research so that you can counter any arguments against your request. For example, If there is an average range of $40,000 to $50,000, you might start by negotiating a salary somewhere in between $50,000 to $60,000. Also, by telling the recruiters how you're able to both save them money and make them money in the long run, you will have a higher chance of getting hired. It's important to remember that there are many ways to negotiate including the following offering a sign-on bonus or other benefits in exchange for a higher salary offering a lower salary in exchange for more time off or other benefits such as health care or tuition reimbursement asking for an increase in title or position conclusion To give yourself the best chance of landing your dream job, make sure you do plenty of research before your interview so you can ace it. There are always going to be positions to fill. The world needs lots of qualified professionals and you are one of them. Think of yourself as a valuable resource to your potential employer and don't think of yourself as needy. Knowing the tips provided in the book will help you get ahead of your competition and be a successful job hunter. So, be confident and go get that job. Your dream job is waiting for you. Thank you for watching this episode. Please don't forget to subscribe. Your likes, comments and shares are highly appreciated. See you soon in our next episode.